So, uh, I'm going into a Boston pizza with my kids, Sadie and Louie. It's 2012. Uh, their ages are 10 and 8 at the time. And I'm explaining to them that their dad, me, is a recovering alcoholic. Uh, it's been six years, it's been 12 years to, da to date. And so I'm telling them, oh, well, that's it's not me, but thank you. Uh, I'm telling, I don't know what's sinking in, what's not sinking in. And we sit down at the table, and the waitress comes over and hands me the drinks menu, and she starts rattling off the cocktails. The eight year old, Louis, looks so excited, and he puts his hand up like he's a school, and the waitress goes, Yes. And he says, That's okay. No drinks. He's an alcoholic. Holic, holic, holic. And the whole restaurant turns around and looks at us. It's not a nice look. It's not like, oh, look, honey, there's an alcoholic over there. It's the first one of the spring. No. Sadie slides down in her seat and then shows up uh, after school a couple of days later to tell me, uh, Louis, you're going to have to tell him to stop telling everyone that you're an alcoholic. He is going around uh, the playground, and he's somehow raising the subject. Oh, you have a peanut allergy? Well, my dad's an alcoholic. <laughs> and uh, Sadie uh, and I said to her my first thought, which was, yeah, we got to shut this down. Uh, but my, my second thought was, well, you know, I mean, I am an alcoholic. So what's the matter with that? I guess he can say it. And her eyes fill with tears because she realizes, uh, and she says it, I'm, in, I'm sorry, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed you're an alcoholic. And it's not her fault. I, I don't know where she learned it, but she learned it somewhere. The eight-year-old had never learned it. He'd never learned that there was anything weird about it. So together, Sadie and I uncovered and discovered this stigma, after which we discarded it. Now, I thought at the time, what other stigma and prejudices have I got like buried in here in the basement that need to be uncovered? Well, I'll tell you one of them was that the blueprint for my life, for most of my adult life, was a ladder. I thought that the point of life was to climb the ladder of success. Achievement, achievement, achievement. Milestone, milestone, milestone. My grandfather was a laborer and a municipal councillor. Next generation, my dad went to university, lawyer, became the mayor of the town I grew up in out west. Myself, four degrees, go to Harvard, get elected to the provincial legislature, and uh, appointed at the age of 37 as the Attorney General of Ontario. A real climber. Um, my experience is that this climb is insatiable, uh, there's, no top la there's no top rung of a ladder. In any event, it all ended uh, for me on August 31st, 2009. A man died. Uh, his name is Darcy Allen Shepard, and um, it's not for me to eulogize him other than to say that he was loved, and he remains loved by many people. I was charged in his death. I was charged with killing him. And the charges were dropped nine months later. But after that, 28 seconds, my life changed. My life had been about success. And now it was about something horrible and tragic. And I was unrecognizable to myself. So I made uh, an unusual addition to a homeless drop-in center a couple of months later. This guy, his name's Jay Barton and he's kind of like a saint. He was born into privilege, but he works at this homeless drop-in center. It's in an old church on Charles Street near Young and Bloor, and its name is Sanctuary. And Jay gets people from other worlds and brings them to this community of people who live on and near the streets. And I couldn't figure out why I was being asked. I, I just think, it was his persistence and my ego just said, sure, if you invite me to something, I'll come. 
as I was coming down, going down the steps into sanctuary, it was a rainy Thursday afternoon. It was around five o'clock, and I was overwhelmed by the sights and sounds and scent of over 100 people who live on the streets in a dining hall all at once. I was extremely uncomfortable. And I went up to the co-founder and the spiritual leader there, Greg Paul, and said, give me something to do, give me something to do. And he said, no, no, you're not here to bend down from a place of privilege and power and uh, feign charity. Uh, you're not here to exert control. The thing that you can offer as a human being that everyone in this room, including you, needs is dignity and love and friendship. So go befriend the stranger. And he pointed at, a, at an empty seat at the table. And I said, sure thing, okay? Just where's the bathroom? And when they weren't looking, I got out of there. I was too uncomfortable. I, I didn't know at the time what it was that chased me out of sanctuary that day. But I kept coming back. I kept coming back, I think, because I thought that it was an escape from reality. It was like a sanctuary for me, this place. I thought that nobody knew who I was. I thought that they didn't know that I'd been accused of killing one of their own. Uh, I thought that I wasn't being judged there at all. I was wrong. I was wrong about everything. Months later, around the time that the charges got dropped, I stepped out into the wet parking lot. There was snow on the ground, I remember, after the sun went down. And I said goodbye to some staff members who were at the door, Alan and Greg and Simon, I think. And um, I stepped behind a car and went on my phone. I was out of sight, uh, but I was within earshot of a conversation that changed my life. Virginia, one of them said. They were swapping stories about members of their community. It was like a loving inventory. Oh, Virginia, well, she's out of that horrible relationship. Uh, she's got new housing. Uh, she changed her meds, and she's a little too far away from uh, her support group. Iggy, this is back when Iggy was alive. Iggy is off the needle. Uh, he's going to 12-step meetings. Uh, he loves his new housing, and uh, he, um, he got back the TV that had been borrowed from him. Michael. I stopped uh, when I heard my name. Michael's getting better. He's showing up earlier, and he stays later. He's making friends with Gord, which is good, because Gord was a friend of Al Shepard's, and he uh, went red in the face for a week when Michael first came in. But now, Michael and Gord have dinner together every Thursday night. Iggy uh, gave him his phone number, and he calls Michael, and they talk about recovery. Michael's getting better. I think he's going to be okay. So I'd gone to this place imagining that I could offer some charity, but instead I received it. Uh, this community of people who live on the streets live the teaching that you can fight injustice but love your enemy. They could see past their own wounds to the uncomfortable truth that I too was isolated and afraid and alone. But I wasn't done uh, learning from this community. I'll never be done. Uh, a few months later, uh, rather a few years later, uh, I got a, uh, a message to go meet Craig. And it was a room in uh, College Park. And when I got there, it turns out it was uh, the jail cells in the basement of the courthouse. And I was talking to him through the plexiglass and said, Craig, I'm no good to you as a criminal lawyer. Honestly, I would not know what to do up there. Uh, and he said, oh, I'll tell you what to do. You get this from the clerk and then that from the public defender, and then you say this to the prosecutor and call me up and get this from bail program and say this to the judge, and then I'm gone. And I said, what do you need me for? 
Craig looked at me like I was the dumbest guy in Canada. Uh, he looked down, and um, I could see it. Uncover, discover, discard. Uh, it, Craig was banged up. He's a First Nations man, and his head looked like it had been through the spin cycle of a washer. Um, he didn't have all his teeth, and he was mumbling. And I could see why he was mumbling. He was, he was ashamed, and he was afraid of what was awaiting him in that criminal court. And then I saw that I was afraid and ashamed. What kind of a former attorney general doesn't know his way around a courtroom? Uh, he gave me this gift of all the dozens of criminal lawyers that were in that building. He decided to trust the one with the least experience but the most to gain. Since then, I've done hundreds of bail hearings and criminal proceedings for guys just like Craig. Far from being atop the justice system as attorney general on an unreal pedestal, finally, I was exactly where I was supposed to be. Uh, I was in the trenches uh, being useful. Uh, and I continue to do that work today at the Canadian Civil Liberties Association. So uh, tell me, who are you <laughs> and where are you right now? I don't, I don't think we can answer that question until you've opened yourself up uh, to participate in something you really don't want to do. Uh, this unwanted thing, it's not an event. Uh, it's a journey contrary to your nature. There's no executive program for this kind of thing. Uncovering, uh, discovering my estranged selves uh, has, and making friends with that stranger's uh, life's work, and um, I barely scratched the surface. I, to change and to be useful, had to give up my idea of who I was, uh, smash the self, and get rid of all my old ideas, all the fears and prejudices and ego trips and uh, uncover, discover, discard, just like Sadie did back at the Boston Pizza. Tell me, uh, when I first said I was an alcoholic, what did you think? Some people might have thought, too much information. Uh, some might have thought, good for you for putting yourself out there. I couldn't do that with my private life but good for you. Uh, that's how I uh, thought or felt about the sanctuary staff when I first met them. Thank God you're doing this, but that's not for me. I had to go down a ladder and meet uh, broken people where they were to see the broken in me and to see where I could be the most useful. And I learned that the ladder is a horrible metaphor. It's only in the material world that people are above you and uh, below you. To the millennials out there, I mean, you're going to have to find this out for yourself, uh, what success is to you. Uh, for me, it, success doesn't matter. All that matters, it turns out, is how we treat each other. So just connect uh, with the broken in yourself and in others. And then... Uh, You'll, you'll see it. Uh, by it, I mean this. I was near Young and Bloor uh, in the last year. And it's where I first set eyes on Darcy Shepard, the man who died. And uh, back when I was a young man, that neighborhood was menacing to me. The squeegee kids and the panhandlers and the broken windows, it was menacing to me, it was. But where before there had been weeds, now, it was a garden, and it was a bloom with all of my friends, and they were all there. Joe B. and Frenchie and Keith and Dennis and Angel and B. Lives shared. I, um, also, there was something else that I couldn't put my finger on. It was like you're in a room like this, and there's like a fan or an air conditioner or a heater blowing, and then it goes off, and you didn't even know that it was on. That's what it was like for me. I, it was, I didn't know that it would been there until it was gone. This mountain of fear and self-loathing was just 
It was gone. For a time, I get a reprieve from it, uh, but I see now that I'm afraid most of the time. If you're afraid, too, uh, you're certainly not alone. If your first thought is um, anger or upset or fear or resentment or a stigma, hold that thought. Your second thought and your first action can be something else. It's called disarmament of the heart. But be careful. If you, like the sanctuary community, fight injustice but start loving your enemies, hate injustice but pray for your enemies, you might just wake up one day and not hate them anymore. Try it. Someone in your life, not Trump, someone real in your life. <laughs> Think about someone that you just, when they walk in the room, or just the sound of it. You don't have to like them. Just pray for them for a month. Try it. Be careful what you wish for. This transformation business is never what you think it's going to be. The life you save may be your own. Thanks.